Hey everybody, my name is RC Concepcion. I'm a photographer, educator, and the author of The Enthusiast Guide to Lightroom, 55 Photographic Principles You Need to Know. This series is designed to give you tips and techniques that are gonna make your work better and make you work faster inside of Lightroom. One of the things that Lightroom does phenomenally well now is the concept of a panorama. You can take multiple images and stitch them together to create some amazing work. And there are some tools to get rid of a little bit of the extra space that you have in there. Now, I wanna show you a couple of pictures that I have here. These are shot with AD810. So this is a 36 megapixel camera and there are four files. So it's four 36 megapixel files, large, large images. Right. I want to take these images and I want to move them into a panorama. I'm going to hit the G key to move me to the grid mode and I'm going to command click all of these. And from here, I want to do a right click and I'm going to go to photo merge and under photo merge, I'm going to select panorama from the list. Clicking on that, it's going to take this one, two, three, four, five seconds. That's all it took to merge this. Now, how does it do this? What Lightroom is doing is it's using the smart previews that it builds on these pictures to perform this merge process and it does it really, really fast. What I like about this is the concept that you don't have to wait a really, really long time if you have a whole bunch of pictures to see that, ah, the panorama doesn't work, I don't really like it. So the speed that it works here I think is really good. Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna take a look at a couple of different options. You'll notice that at the very, very top and left corners, and lower corners right there, you have a lot of white space. And you can get rid of that by clicking on auto crop. That will crop all of that extra space and you're pretty much good to go. But you can also select different types of options here, right? So this cylindrical option looks at it, it's almost kind of like a 360 panorama, right? And this one leaves the center picture straight and then it mends the left and the right in perspective. So it looks a little skewed. You could still auto crop it and get a really, really nice shot. So there's a lot of information here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go back to spherical and under spherical, I wanna take a look at this option here called boundary warp. Now in boundary warp, what you can do is you can click and drag this out and watch what's happening to the curves at the very edges, right? It's gonna take those and it unfurls it and warps the image to such a manner that now you're not losing any of that space that's in the corner. That I think is a great, great ad because you don't wanna necessarily shoot a panoramic and then have all of that information get lost, right? I want as much of the panoramic as I can get in this one shot and Boundary Warp is gonna give me a great way to be able to do that. Now, once this is all done, I'm gonna click on Merge and what happens is it hands that information off back to Lightroom and Lightroom continues to process this file. But there is something else that I think is very important to note when you're working with this inside of Lightroom. The resulting image that you work with here is going to be a DNG file. That's to say that it will be also a raw file that you can process. Now, watch right here, you have the file that's all merged, it's panel, and it says that it is a DNG file. So if I double click on it, now I can go back into the develop module and inside of the develop module, I can adjust it and move it around just as if it were a raw file, notice that all of my white balances are available there. So all of this is raw data, which I think is really good. I'm gonna see if I can get rid of this one spot here. I'm just gonna use my brush and I'm gonna make a bigger brush here and I'm just gonna click right here and just paint this one section. It'll sample from another area. If I don't like the area that it's gonna sample from, I could always just move it to a new spot get it to a spot that I believe is going to better match what I have there. Now that's matched a little bit better. I can feather that just a tiny bit, click on close, and now we have a finished image. I'm gonna hit the G key to bring myself back out here. The other thing that I think is really cool is if you shift click a series of these pictures, do a right click, go to photo merge, and go to panorama, if you hold on the shift key when you're doing that, it'll bypass the preview dialog box and just create the panorama automatically. So you don't have to use that center portion, that middle screen to make any kind of adjustments if you know that what you're gonna get here is going to be good. Now, that looks pretty good. We've got a great panorama. All we gotta do is finish toning it inside of Lightroom and we're good to go. If you wanna see more tips like this, make sure that you take a look at my book at rockynook.com. 
the Enthusiast Guide to Lightroom. My name is RC. Thanks for watching.